Okay, we're live. It's happening. My, li my lights are crooked. Wait a minute, I'll just check my lights. Oh, dear, oh dear. There we go, that's better. Can't stand crooked lights in the studio. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. How are ya? I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass on the ongoing saga of making boxes. Oh, dear, oh dear. It's all happening. I'm on the downhill run and I want to thank everyone that supported me and been there while I'm doing it because it's much easier to do when you think someone's watching you. Well, it is easier to do when you think someone's watching you, but it's not as easy to do when you think someone's watching you. So there you go. It's the, the dichotomy of life. Oh, so I'm on the downhill run. What I'm going to do... Now, I was hoping to get it all finished, but I've just had a look at um, my hot glue gun situation. Good day, John. How are you? Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate that. The more, the merrier. Um, yeah, my hot glue gun sticks have disappeared. Uh, I don't know where they are, so I'm limited to how much I can... Did my hot gluing, so I might not get done as much as I would like, but that doesn't mean to say we're not going to get a lot done. It's all good. What I'm doing at the moment is just polishing the inside lip, and then I'm going to wax that, and then the boxes are finished. I've actually glued the leather into this one because I sneaked a bit of work in before I went live and uh, then I've got to, well, I'll do this actually, I'll do this to all of them first and then, it's got a bit of glue on it, which I didn't want, oh dear, excuse boy, get the cabinet scraper out and then uh, what I will do is fit the Yeah, mutt. I'll fit the lining boards to the inside. Just got a bit of glue here that's not... What do they say? Surplus to requirements. There you go. Bit of glue that's surplus to requirements. I think that's got it. Bryce, good day, mate. How are you? Thanks for jumping in. Munchie, there you go. You're in nice and early. Oh, yeah, I used to put lead times, but I couldn't be bothered now. Then, nah, I've got work to do. Let's go. And, and then if you watch the live stream afterwards, it's a pain because you've got a countdown to do. And I'm really not that precious. Well, I hope I'm not that precious. But I want everyone to know that I'm streaming. Because I figure if you want to watch, you watch. And if you don't, well, no amount of preamble is going to change that so I've just got a little bit of I don't know why for whatever reason it's got a little bit of extra glue on there I don't think I ordered okay so here we go ah la da da get out boss how you going, mate? How's the golf swing? Uh. <whistles> I, I don't know if you... Well, yeah, most of you were here yesterday. Um, we, I got a text. Do you want a pool table? And... Uh, oh dear. I didn't really, but I went and had a look at it. And yeah, it's pretty disgusting. But that's what endeared me to it. It's uh, actually a slate, eight foot by, eight by four is it? It's got a nice slate top on it. The timber work is absolutely disgusting, terrible, shocking. And it does need a new cloth. But I um, 
rang around to find out how much a cloth costs, and that's around the $800 mark. And I'm pretty sure it's within my skill set to do all the timber work. And I thought, why not? Then I can make, basically, I'll have a brand new pool table for a quarter of the price of what a brand new pool table would cost me. So I've put my hand up for it and even Susie was enthusiastic. She's rearranging the lounge room so we can get it in there. Grandkids are a bit ticked off because it means they can't sit in the air conditioning and watch TV and play games because Papa's going to have a pool table in there. But I think once they get into the spirit of it, they will benefit from having it there as well. So that's what transpired. That big um, log or big burl that I mentioned I got yesterday, I wanted to clean that off, but I didn't get that far when I finished from here. No, what I did? Oh, I had to go shopping and drive around and do some other bits and pieces. So not much else got done. But I'm really keen to get these boxes finished. I would like to have them finished today, but I think they'll still be going till tomorrow. It's not the building of the blinking things that takes the time, it's all the, the fiddly bits that you do that takes the extra time. I shall look up in a minute. I'm sorry, I don't mean to ignore you. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but would they be recurring subscribers, Boz? That's what I want to know. Yeah, they're, um, no, I'm not even going to go down that road. But you know what I mean. Ah. Now I've lost, wait, wait, mother polishing rag. Here we go. Oh. La -de 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 -de. Nothing ruins a good handicap like life, eh, mate? did have. I'm going to fit all these shortly and I'll do those by hand and I'll show you a donkey's ear shooting board which I think I've actually got a video of that I made. I don't know. But the, yesterday if you remember I scratched the top of one of them, which was this one, and I'll show it to you. All fixed it. Um, ba -dee -dee -dum -bum. Hi, David, how are you? Bob's up in the house. So he might come down later on. Bob's, Bob, John, what's the best way to accomplish the gluing staining procedure? I ask because when I glue and assemble and think I have properly cleaned it up, I quickly realise once I stain it, I haven't. Um, yeah, common error, common error, John. I think the, the main thing is, um, well, I use hide glue. So that isn't 
as big a problem as PVAs. Uh, but basically, if you're using PVA, as soon as you glued it together, get a wet rag and wash all the excess glue off. That's what I do. And then um, when it's dry, sand it again and wet it again. And does, that does a couple of things. It uh, raises the grain so your stain actually goes on nicer. And the other thing is if you've got any glue still there when you wet it, you will see that there's glue still on there. Okay, this is the one that, whoops, I scratched yesterday and it was around there. But scratch has gone. So now I'm just going to put the magic lotion on it and then we'll buff this and then we can start fitting the interior of this as well. I should take that bit out and put it up as a separate video, I guess, to show that there's no point in losing your cool if something doesn't go right because it just takes you four times as long. Oh. I'll just put this on here so it doesn't slip slide around. Ba -da -ba -da. So that's the best thing, John. Just be careful. And when you see there's um, excess glue, just wipe it off pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. But I, I agree with you. There's nothing so disheartening as you, you've finished a job you're really happy with. You put the stain on it and there's a great big blotch there. Okay, so that one's, get up there, that one has been polished, scratch is gone, and we'll start working on the inside of this one then. Oh, this has already got, that's good. So I've got to clean the inside of the lid, and so I don't know if I've, I'm, oh, I don't know how to do this. No, I might change the plans because I'm just looking at that and that hasn't been, that has not been sprayed. This one has, so I'll clean that up. Um, what am I looking for? Bit of brass, a bit of paper. 1500, give me some fair, oh, 1200 a little bit. Yeah, for some reason that top hasn't been done, so I'll do this bit and I'll go spray the tops later. So what I will do is move into fitting the insert. And I won't put the leather in this one because I haven't done the top. And once I spray, oh, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do this. And I might go and give the lid a quick spray. See how we go. I don't know if I, that's all of them or is it just that one? I really don't know. So normally I spray the tops and the everything at once, but I don't think that has been. All right, well, slight change of plan, but it's okay. We will soldier on regardless. Oh, John, I imagine there are heaps of possibilities, but any idea why my number Seven and number five. See, I'm dyslexic. Your number five and your number seven.
both got stuff like Oregon, but feel like they are skating over a piece of Jarrah, I have. Um, I'd reckon it would be the angle at which it's sharpened. What angle do you sharpen it at? If you can tell me that, that would be much as good. Um, my guess is, just off the top of my head, which isn't a good place, uh, it's definitely the sharpening and Oregon and that being soft, you're picking up um, the fibres and it's, it's not so much planing them, it's gouging them. Whereas when you're going onto a hardwood, you can't get a cut. Uh, number one thing to check, or two things equally important, one is what angle do you have your blade sharpened at, but I'm starting to suspect more than anything else, the back of the blade isn't dead flat. I would say you had a turnover or something right on the cutting edge on the back of the blade. On a soft bit of softwood, it doesn't make that much difference. But when you're using something with a bit of density about it, it does. Okay, so that's done. Trevor's got power back. I don't know if he's in. He asked me last night if I was going on. Same with Max. Craig, good morning all. Uh, been a long time. Yeah, well, it's been a long time since I've done a live chat, actually. Um, but I'm here. I'm here because I've got jobs to do. Yep, 30 degrees is what I set mine at. Um... No, not really. The, the only issue you get with a bigger mouth opening is you don't get such a fine shaving. But if you're not getting a shaving, that's what I feel the problem would be. Oh, I really don't know what's going on here. Oh. Give it a go. Can you take a, a photo of the back of the plane and post it, send it to me, whatever? And I'm happy to have a look see. Bada boom. <laughs> and the other thing, not that it really would make any difference, it wouldn't skate. Um, but just make sure you've just got the little bit of blade poking out under the, um, not the cap iron, what's it called? Yeah, cap iron, yeah. Just, I have about three sixteenths of an inch poking out under mine. Now, if you have a, a, a lot more, it uh, can tend to get you gouging the timber rather than planing it, but that way you would still be planing timber, I guess, wouldn't you? Up 
purpose at? Well, that might have been done. I don't know. I, I'm thinking to myself at the moment. I started these things so long ago. You just can't remember what you've done and what you haven't done. No, that's, that's been done, so I can polish that one. Ah. Yeah, well, they, I, well, I don't know. Um, yeah, because Max asked when I was streaming next, I said sometime today, but I don't know when. And same with Trev, same with young Trevor. Hey, Andy, how you going? I think I, I said it before. Oh, it's the little bits. Building the big bits is easy. It's the little bits that take your time. I'm well, thanks, uh, Andy. Yeah, and Sue's well. I yeah, I don't know. She she's got a cleaning bee this morning. I don't know what's going on. I did make sure. I said you're not pregnant, eh? She said no. Just want to tidy the house. I'll be right. So I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the rest of us. Oh, shh. But I think she's just settling in back home because she's been away. And I know when I've been away for a, any length of time, it's, it takes you a bit of time to settle back into the routine of being home in your own house and your own way of doing things. But she might well come down. I don't know. Oh. <whistles> started watching a few of the old Dick Van Dyke movies, 1960s vintage, on Netflix last night. Dear, oh dear, what an uncomplicated time we lived in. And, and they're still good. They're still funny. The thing I like about them, you don't have to think too hard. You can just go on the journey of the, of the movie without, <laughs> without having to think of double meanings or worrying about what's going to happen because you know they all come out in the end. There we go. That's uh, another one gone. Three. Five actually because I did two before. No, they have been done. So that's okay. What, 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 where, where's me thing? Craig, good morning. Uh, been a long time. Yeah, David, 30 degrees. Yeah, that's kind of. Did he, but uh, Andy's come in. Did he, did he, did he? Okay. 
Jinzo, how do I get started with making those these boxes? Well, um, there's a video that you could check out. I don't know if I can do it. Um, num, 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 num. Hang on, wait a minute. I'll see if I can find it and I'll give you the link to how I actually did make these boxes. Where's my keyboard? Um, see if that's going to come up. don't need that so that can go on hold but I'll have I'll take that and I'll shut that down and I'll go into the chat and I'll do that and I'll do that and I'll do that there you go <coughs> who asked me that Zinko yeah if you had that click that uh, link I just put up that is um, a TV show that I did where I actually made these exact boxes. It was these boxes that I made. So I think there's six episodes and just go through that. It will show you how to make boxes like these and also whoop, boxes like that with a raised panel lid. So it'll show you how to do both types. Hook in, my friend, have a go. If you get stuck, drop me a line. Happy to help. Uh, okay, now where did my mouse go? Yeah. Buddy, do do boom. Jared, good morning. How are you, my friend? Uh, Boz, what? Big name musicians do you all have over there like old school crooners? I don't think we got any old school crooners. Oh, Jimmy Barnes. If you can't, if you class Barnsey, maybe Farnsey as well. Um, Jimmy Barnes got a great story about Jimmy Barnes. I, uh, who, who used to be with Australian Crawl? I was living in a small country town many, many years ago. My kids were only young and we were having a treat. We went to Pizza Hut and Jimmy Barnes was doing a concert at the local club. And wouldn't you know it, him and his roadie mates came into the Pizza Hut and Luke, my youngest son, he was, he would have been, I don't know, maybe seven or eight. And he said to me, Dad, Dad, he says, Jimmy Barnes over there, Jimmy Barnes. I said, well, go and say good day to him. Oh, all right. So Lukey gets up and he rocks over. He says, and he, had, he used to have his kids in the band called the Billy Lids. So it was Jimmy Barnes and the Billy Lids. And, um, yeah, Luke, Luke said, G'day, Mr. Barnes. How are you? Where are the Billy Lids? He said, oh, mate. He said, I left them on home. I'm on tour. He said, do you want to sit down and have a pizza with me? So my son sat down and had a pizza with Jimmy Barnes. And when he was, we were on the, right over the other side of the restaurant and I thought it was so nice of the man. When he'd finished, he came over to our table, shook Luke's hand and wished us all the very best and, and good night. I thought, that is a true gentleman. So that's my Jimmy Barnes story. I got a similar one with Rodney Roode, if you're familiar with the, the rude comedian, Rodney Roode, I was um, walking down, same, same town, I was walking down the street one day and who should be there but Rod. Um, and anyway, I stopped, I said, mate, I know you get called, asked this all the time. 
I said, but could you please give me autograph, give me your autograph to the kids? Yeah, he said, I can do better than that. And he had his roadies with him. So he kicked his roadies off. He told them to go back to the motel. And Rodney Rood and I sat in the main street of this little country town and we had coffee and cakes together and I repaired a guitar for him and he invited Sue and I to the show. And it was really, really quite funny. And then he gave us um, a lot of merchandise for the kids. Uh, they were teenagers by that stage and there was pretty rude t-shirts with rude words on it. And they wore them to school the next day and were sent home. <laughs> so that's my brush with fame. Uh, he's a frustrated woodworker, young Rodney, apparently. But no, I had, had good time with him. Yeah, when I think about it, yeah, I've met a lot of people. And they're all just people. I'll check the chat in a minute. I, I have to concentrate while I'm doing this or else I can make a bit of a mince pie out of it. Ah. <laughs> Suck your logs in wood. Yeah, good on ya. You all right, Jinzo? If you get any problems, give us a buzz. Drop me a line. Your whistling has got me singing, fly me to <laughs> Well, there you go. It's, it's, I've noticed when I whistle a lot of times, hey, Jude. <laughs> See? Oh, I know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> hey, Jude. Who did I say that to the other day? It was someone. They said, what are you whistling? I said, oh, hey, Jude. Oh. He sings out, said the Beatles, and they go, who? You're kidding me! I, I, you've never heard of the Beatles! Dear, oh dear. But then again, they gave me some of the bands that they listened to, and I hadn't heard of them either, so... Maybe that, that's karma, or fair cop. I don't know. Oh. So wait for that compressor to stop now. Won't be long. I do prefer the compressor in the other shed because it's a lot quicker. There you go. Must have heard me, got all offended and stopped. Hey, Chad, welcome back, mate. Didn't you have a post about it? I don't know, I can't remember. I was furniture making in those days, but... I don't know. Rod Ilford is his real name. He, he was so polite. It's funny because if you ever listen to any of his gear, he's so potty mouth. It's not funny. But he apologised. He said, oh, are you going to bring your wife? I said, yes, is your lover? He said, well, come early. He said, because it's like getting smacked in the face otherwise because... <laughs> I get a bit carried away. And at the end of the show, we went backstage to catch up with him and get all this great merchandise for the, the kids. And I remember he took Susie's hand and he says, oh, I'm sorry, love. He said, it wasn't too rude for you. It was all right. He said, it wasn't too bad. And crikey. And she just laughed. Said, no, it's fine. I hear worse coming out of Steve from the workshop. <laughs> Uh, ba -da -ba -dum. 
I'm looking at putting new flooring down too. I've saved a bit of money up and I want to put new flooring down so then I can put the new bed on a new floor. That's going to be exciting. It really is. Look, I love this. You've got no idea how... I, I used the word yesterday. I used it again. Word for the day. Cathartic. Um, <laughs> you want to get all green and spiritual and um, care berry on me. Healing. There's nothing wrong with healing. Um, just to do this, because I've got people there. Goodness knows why. But they want to watch me. And it's so nice. You, you're not alone. You're never alone on YouTube. It really is very nice. So I do sincerely thank you all for patiently sitting there and putting up with my meanderings, pontifications and rambling. Uh, so I've, I've written, I'll tell you what I found the other day um, was, are we still there or am I, oh no, we're good, was an old hard drive. It was that old, it was just the basics USB stick, well, USB one or two or, uh, two or three. And I found all these poems I'd written years ago. Um, and I thought I should, I should put them up on YouTube because they're all uh, about hope and positivity and never give up. And I think I was going through a particular hard time or whatever time I was going through. And they're really cool. I had this affinity with... A seagull, believe it or not. I used to go down the beach and just sit and watch the waves. Poetry and woodwork, now there's a different take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, see ya. Perth, see ya. Theo saw one. Um, a friend of mine in Australia had just done up a rocking horse, an old Robeck rock, rocking horse, 1930s jobby. And I sent him a poem I wrote because I used to love doing rocking horses up. They held so much magic. And Theo goes, thought that was a bit out of left field, you with poetry. And I said, mate, I've, I've written enough to fill a book. And I oh, was speaking of which, yeah, when I um, found this hard drive, there are, well, the two books that I've already had published. And there was about five other books that I'd started, but not quite finished so I would like to maybe I'll do that next year maybe next year's going to, oh next year's going to be the the year of the bees it's going well oh, well it'll be bee boxes beds and books I might finish writing me books I love it because you you don't know where the book's going to take you same with the public anyway, I'll get back to the seagull where are we up to my board needs some um, planning and I'm not complaining. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's a good start. Good start, Boz. Oh, dear. If I could get the thing with me swing, I'd get better, not bitter. Oh, there you go, right off the top of me head. Oh, <laughs> poet life. Laureate, yeah, here we go. It's all going to be, all going to be happening now. Uh, ah, good morning. <clears throat> Whoever said good morning, I can't read your name, but thank you. Good morning. I'm pleased you dropped in. Um, well, I can't work at this time of the morning as neighbours would complain. Well, get new neighbours. That's it. That's all you got to do. Two o'clock in the morning. I don't woodwork at two o'clock in the morning. Sue does. Sue does a lot of woodwork at two o'clock in the morning. She saws her. Well, she saws all her rough boards up. You can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
she's she just likely to come down now. <laughs> Bless her. She worries me sometimes. I'll go in and she's not snoring. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, dear. It's all good. Everything's good. Anyway, getting back to this. Um, yeah, what are we on chat? Uh, yeah, that, that's it. I like that one too. I've, I've done that to Vegas. Oh, look, you've got so many names. Um, Steve, I can't believe you start projects and not finish them. Well, why not? It's, it's, sometimes it's not important to finish it. Sometimes by the time you've done something, you've learned what it is you wanted to do. And books, books, they, you've got to be inspired. Although I have, when I did a, one book, um, you know, I literally sat down in the office and just sat there and wrote that one. Another one I wrote in a public library. Um, and the one I really, really want to finish, which, which is nice, I've got to get back to doing that. But then I get sidetracked and I stream. So what can I tell you? Oh, dear. Um, what are we up to? If you came over to complain, learn to hand them a sander and write them down. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. No, if they're complaining about the noise, don't give them a sander. Give them a, give them a sanding block. Give them one of those. Here you go. It's a way to go. Ah. Good day, Panda. Oh, at least third time's a charm. Although I don't know, I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I've got to go and pick this pool table up. Um, but it depends how much of these boxes I get done today, whether or not I will stream any of it. Tomorrow, what's tomorrow, Thursday? See, they're meant to be delivered Friday. So I'm a bit ticked off because I said they'd be ready Saturday and there's, oh, can you make it Friday? And I, I should have gone, no, we'll make it Monday. But it's all right, we're doing okay. We're getting there. Oh. <sighs> yeah, I'll get back to the seagull. Oh, look at that, it's three to go. On sighted. Now what's the go with this one? Has this one been done? No, it hasn't, so that's got to be. That's all right, we can do that in a bit. Boom, ba -dee, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. Um, Yeah, this seagull didn't have any, any feet. It didn't have any legs. And he just had stumps, just where his knees would have been. So I called him Stumpy. And he used to come to the same spot every day. And I, I used to go down there several times over several weeks. Got some great photographs of him. I got, got one shot. The wind's really blowing and he's standing there. And the wind's blowing and he's just going along the, the jetty because he's got nothing to hold his feet in place. And I got inspired to write, write this um, poem, I think that was the first big one. I, I'd written a few more before that, but this was this was the start of tapping into the the new creative potential. And it was all about how he couldn't get his own food, and seagulls at the beach they couldn't um, he couldn't compete with them for scraps because they all had legs, and so they could get there a lot quicker. And what he had to do was he had to overcome, it was all about fear and positivity. He had to overcome his fear of people in order to get fed. And so he, um, he learned about trust and because of his situation, he had to take risks 
to get fed. So he, instead of just waiting for someone to throw a scrap that the other seagulls would come and get, he literally would walk up to you and almost take it out of your hand. So it was, it was good. Stumpy the seagull. I saw one on, um, <laughs> I, I saw one on Facebook yesterday. It really made me laugh. Uh, I don't know what do you call them? Um, what are they called? Pluggers or plungers or whatever? People that go down sinkholes and um, explore hidden caves, subterranean caves. Plunkers are they? Plunkers? Something like that. And anyway, they, there was. There was a, a photo of these people with their, their helmets on and their lights. Cavers, cave explorers discover a cave that's been sealed for five million years. How they knew that, I don't know. Perhaps it had a time on it, time lock or something. And somebody had written, this is 2020, close it up, close it up for goodness sake. Yeah, I, that was it. Um, and they discovered 50 new creatures never seen before. And they said, it's 2020, seal it up, seal it up for goodness sake. Don't know what's coming out of that. Yeah, she's been a funny old year. But I don't know about you, but to me it's gone so quickly. It just, it seems to have flown by. Well, perhaps because that's why I'm over 50 and it's all downhill from now on, I don't know. But it seems to have gone very quickly. And by the way, I'm well over 50. Decade and a half over 50. Yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we don't get an extension. Oh, <laughs> we'll give you 12 months with the um, option of another three years. No, go away. P spelunking, splunking. That's it. I knew it had a lunking in it somewhere. Not my idea. I'm a windbag. I don't get down a flipping sinkhole or I don't know where it is, where the end is or, well, oh no, I get the heebie-jeebies getting into a deep bath. Oh, two to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, you rotter. Got a little bit of a Bit of scratch. <laughs> oh, I tell you, there's a beautiful beach um, on the Gold Coast that we go to. It's the Turos don't go to it that much. So that's possibly why it's so nice. It's called Burley, and uh, Sue and I were down there one day, and it was on dusk, and we decided we'd have some fish and chips. And it was so nice, we'd go and sit down. Sit down um, next to the ocean on a bench under these big Norfolk pine trees and have our fish and chips. And we were down there and it, well, it would have been about seven o'clock. And all of a sudden it started to rain. But it wasn't that heavy, it was just sort of spitting. We thought, oh... No, we'll sit there. We're not going to get too wet. So we just sat there under this pine tree eating our fish and chips. And after about 10 minutes, we hadn't quite finished all the fish and chips. 
it was starting to get a bit windy. And we thought, oh, we'll go and sit in that picnic area because there's an undercover bit and we, at least we'll be out of the rain and it's a little bit sheltered. Well, when we actually got in there, we discovered it wasn't raining. What it was, was the tree we were sitting underneath was full of parrots and all our fish and chips were covered in green you know what. And we were eating it. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so there you go. If you ever go and sit under a tree, take a flashlight with you. Isn't it marvellous when you don't know what you're eating, you don't care, but once you realise what you've eaten, yeah, yuck. <sighs> so, I hope no one was having a sandwich or something at that stage. <clears throat> what kind of wood did you use for those boxes? Um, these are actually veneered boxes, so it's on a, a European birch ply substrate. The main timber is black bean and the solid edging around the tops and the stand is Queensland walnut, which isn't a true walnut, but it, it sort of looks a bit like uh, black walnut and it's got more of a greeny tinge to it. But it doesn't smell anything like black walnut. It stinks. Colloquially, it is known as dog do. If you smell it when it's wet, it just smells like fresh dog stuff. It stinks. But it is a beautiful timber to use. It's very, very popular in the uh, 1930s and 40s as a veneer for cabinetry for um, just when they started to do mass production stuff before the war, before the Second World War. Um, after that it wasn't so popular. A lot of Art Deco furniture is veneered in um, Queensland walnut. As a matter of fact, I, I had a, an email the other day from a lady in America somewhere and she sent me this picture of a half round china cabinet and said, could you identify this wood? And I'm thinking, America, I haven't got a chance. I don't know what timber you've got. I mean, I know you've got maple and you've got cherry and you've got sequoia and you've got um, walnut and what have you. But I said, look, from what I can see in the photo, I think it's Queensland walnut from Australia. And she said, you're absolutely right. She said, I bought it on a trip to Melbourne. <laughs> so isn't that good? I thought I got one right. I'm not going to tell anyone because they won't believe it. But I get the satisfaction of thinking I got one right. What I'm going to do with these, what have we got, one more after this? Yeah, one more after this. Then we'll start fitting these cedar boards. And as long as my glue gun lasts, we'll put the leather in the bottom. And I've got a couple there that are nearly totally finished. So I'll show you what they should look like. Yeah, a mate of mine rang me up from interstate one day and I could hear people in the background. He said, mate, he said, if I said to you, I want some dog, you know what, what would I be talking about? And I said, Queensland walnut. And all of a sudden the background noise just erupted. Apparently he was in a pub and they were talking about it. And he said, no, fair dinkum. He said, there is a timber known in the trade as dog. And they didn't believe him. So when he rang me up, and of course, I said, yep, that's it. Everyone thought it was a great joke. Okay, last one, then we'll move on to a different task. 
I think this is the most I've ever made of any one thing. They have to look the same. Oh! I don't know if you've ever smelt uh, zebrano or zebra wood. If you smell that, that, <laughs> that smells like camel dung. But if you smell that, times it by about 10, and you're getting close to what Queensland walnut smells like. Oh. Oh, Max! Max! My mate, Max! How's the broom business, mate? Missed ya! If I'd known you were going to be here, I'd put the lathe on. No, I wouldn't. Although, Theo's got a new one, and I'm getting a new one, but I don't know if I want it. Because I really like the one I've got. How you been anyway, Maxwell? I think that's going to be the end of that. Been swimming laps, BG. That, that is commendable. Inside or outside? Okay, last one. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. La -da -da -da. Oh, just in case one of my granddaughters is watching. Hello, Raven. I told Dad I'll give you a shout out, so I should tell him. I'll tell him that I did it, and then you can watch. Inside, cold has. Victoria got a something with my <laughs> Oh let me get this one up. Uh... I mean there's a uh, a speaker. I don't know if he's still alive. It was really good. Um, American chap called Zig Ziglar and some of his talks they were just so inspirational, motivational talks this is in the 80s and I remember one he talked about he said I have a regime a fitness regime and he said I never ever stop I don't care what weather's doing, the other day I was in I don't know, Colorado or somewhere, he said it was 24 degrees below and I still ran 5 miles he said, I would add, that was outside. I was inside in the gym. So, yeah, inside pools to me. But my idea of exercise is running the bath, pulling the plug and fighting the current. That'll do me. Okay, now we've got to fit these all up. Ah. Oh. That's good to hear, Max. Don't let the world get to you. Oh, yeah, you told me that. That's excellent. You've got a hide pot now, glue pot. Uh, all right, let's put one of these in. Here, here we go. So I'm laying that in the bottom. And what I'm going to do is, if I can find it, I've got a hot glue gun. So I'm just putting a little bit around there. And 
and dropping this straight in on top of that hot glue. And I'm looking for something that I can't find, so I don't know I won't use it if I can't find it. There we go. And then I'm just pushing that down. Okay, now that's glued in nice and securely. And what I have to do now is fit these inside pieces. And I think this one's going to behave itself. I'm impressed. Sort of. Look. So that one can be done. We'll get back up the pile now. Okay, this one needs to be fitted. So I'll just put some leather in there to start with. a little bit that's a little bit big want that one okay so where is a knife oh I tell you what it's going to be getting close to coffee time isn't it I'm just going to score this with a knife and cut the excess out. I guess you can half see what I'm doing. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Raggedy, but it's okay. It's a bit raggedy on that end there, but once I put one of these in, it should be deep enough to cover that, I think. So we've got to fit it. So in order to do that, I'm going to sharpen my plain blade up which I put up here to do before I streamed. Tell you what I've done, I've, I've switched over to diamond stones and oh gracious they're good. Mm. 
The ordinary Steins are, uh, whoops, where are we? The ordinary Steins work really, really well, and I don't have an issue with them, but the advantage of the diamond stone, make sure I'm clear on that, is they never go out of square. Which is great. Particularly, there we go. Particularly if, like my all my chisels and straight edge tools, sometimes I'll push too hard on one side, and the stone will wear that way. Whereas with this diamond stone, it stays perfectly flat the whole time and. If you're not doing much um, sharpening, it's not an issue, but I've got, well now I think I've got well over 60, the heck's that, 60 planes in this workshop. And if I decide to have a sharpening day, it is a big day. And I'll have to dress the stone a few times, whereas with the diamond stone, it stays level, it stays square, and I'm not getting, what have I got there? I'm not getting um, build up of stone in my tray. Uh, now I'm, I'm sold on them. Oh, I'll fix that. This one I've got here is, I think it's 600 grit because all my chisels and planes have already been ground so I don't have to do any resurfacing or regrinding. But in the wood turning shed, I use the 250 grit, no, 350 grit stone because the gouges uh, sometimes need a bit of a regrind. But for me, this is just, ooh, that's nice and sharp. Okay, so what I've got to do is, we've got to clear a bit of space here. If you wonder what that green uh, stuff is, it's just um, radiator inhibitor, because one of the downsides of the diamond stones are if you leave it immersed in water, which you're not meant to do, but I do, uh, it can rust. Whereas I find if I leave it, leave the inhibitor in there, it doesn't rust. So in case you're wondering what that color was. Okie dokie. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just setting this plane up. This is an actual purpose-built shooting plane from Veritas and it can be used as a shooting plane that way but you can also use it down there as a flattening plane. Uh, I'm going to use what they call a donkey's ear shooting board and I think there actually is a video up of me making this one. And if you're going to get into box making in any sort of serious way, these are absolutely brilliant. Because you can cut your 45s on it. Let's see if we can go that one on that one. And we'll turn this one around so you can see that. There you go. 
Uh, this is made, this was made for this shooting plane. Work a bit of grease in there. But you can make them so they'll just take ordinary uh, block planes or ordinary planes, whatever you fancy. Where are we up to? Um, let me have a chin wave. Hang on, let me have a chin wave before we get into that. Have you got the high glue to go with it yet, Maxo? My class block for my box arrived Tuesday. Good stuff. Oh, way to go, BG. I prefer sit-ups. I prefer sit-downs. Absolutely. I, I'm with you there too. Yeah, Bob's up in the house. He's getting a bit, he's getting a bit slower now. He doesn't come down here so often. Hey, Wes. Yes, I got that. I certainly did. Um, if I'm available, I would love to be there because it'll be 11 o'clock our time. And that sounds awesome. So congratulations to Wes and Ange who are getting married next week. I think it's next week. Yes, it is, isn't it? So, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to be online with you. That'd be great, Wes. Thanks for the invite. Makes a hash of them, mate. I make more hashes than I get them right, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, look on the bright side. With only six planes or no planes, it's not hard to sharpen them then. Lumber thickness 0.25 of an inch, quarter of an inch. What, what is, Ty? Lumber thickness, quarter of an inch. Oh, you use veneer on all your boxes. Right. Yeah, I'm using um, manufactured veneer. It's oh, about three thirty seconds, I think, or um, 0.8 of a mil. But I still have that shooting board I made after watching... <laughs> Well, when you get a plane, you're right. You'll know what you're doing. Uh, it doesn't matter. Providing they work, Andy, doesn't matter. If not, Max, I can send you some down from up here. Um, I think Arbitech have it, but I'm not sure if they're open in Melbourne. Yeah, look, most of mine have come up. Um, well, some have, I've bought through necessity and others have come up when sales have been on. Okay, now that there, let's go back to this one. No, let's not. Let's go to that one. That is just a little bit too fat. So I'm just going to have to take a little bit off, but we'll try it here first. No, actually, that fits in there quite nicely. So we'll, we'll keep that one there. See, so even though you think the box is square, it doesn't necessarily mean it is. Now that's too big. So, there you go, move that. So now I'm just going to take a little bit off of here and we'll see how we go. Just a couple of passes to start with. Oh! So I might just put a bit more blade out to it. Might just have a little bit more blade out. Okay, took a little bit too much off that, but we might get away with it. That is so close.
I don't, I don't want it loose, but I don't want it that tight that it's going to split the box either. Yes, and there we go, we just covered that. Mistake up. Got, got to be happy with that. Last one. Here we go. Ah, da, 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 da. Wes, I have 12 planes and have sold twice because I never use them. <laughs> yeah, I've sold all my working gear a few times. I'm not going to do it again. Don't force it. Yeah, famous last words, BG. Oh, that's terrible. I'm, I'm looking at Hang on. Now, I've got a little way to go before my accumulation is spread over 50 years, but not far. Thomas, good day, mate. How are you? Thanks for dropping in. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's it, Ty, real woodworking. If I stuff it, I stuff it live. There you go. None of this. Oh, here's one I prepared earlier, Jobby. Um, you can, oh, I've got a, a picture frame is guillotine here that I could use, which, which is under a pile of rubbish, but I'll show it to you. Whoops, where is it? There you go. Um, but for these, oh, me, me finger just came out. Wait a minute, oh. The mount just came off my tripod. How did that happen? Very disconcerting. Um, yeah, but the picture frame is guillotine. When I'm using really thin stuff like I'm using now, it, uh, it gives me too much tear out. And for what I'm doing, really, the only answer is exactly what I'm doing here. And it, it takes a bit of time, but sometimes it can save a bit of time too because you can get it accurately. Whereas if I went over to say the table saw, I could take too much off and then I'm too far gone. And if I take too much off doing it this way, too much isn't very much, if that makes sense. Close, but no cigar. Mm. We get me. And, and you might say, why is that idiot taking a bit off both ends? Surely, if you take it all off one end, you go, you're going to shorten it the same distance. True, but the reason I do that is just in case the other end gets a bit out of the square. Oh, I reckon that will.
Yeah. And another one's gone and another one's gone. Ouch. Another one bites the dust. So if, if you want to go away and have a nap, by all means do it because all it'll be doing is just what I'm doing at the moment. Oh. Now this one is missing. One. And I don't know if I've got one. Oh, that could, that could work. We might do that. That okay. Whoops. Oh, what have I got there? No, okay, this one. This one's got one one angle. So that's got to have a bit worked on. That one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. And this one we're going to have to cut down. So what we'll do is we'll cut it down. Da -da -da -da. Ouch. That. No. We'll see. I'll make it a bit a bit fatter than I want. <coughs> and then we can cut it down to size. I'm not bothering putting a knife cut in there for one reason it's going to get planed off and the second reason it is so easy to cut there's no point. leather in there first. Only what I'll do, I'll make sure it's going to fit before I stick the glue in. That's pretty darn good. there okay that one doesn't fit that one fits okay let's clean this one up okay there you go pretty big on this one I'm going to put, oh, what have I got there? Butterscotch. Don't want butterscotch. Want vanilla. I'm going to put a coffee on. There you go. 
Ja, han är nog räcker nog vänt på det av den kvar. Just, just a little bit more. Here you go, look at that. And another one's done. Barreling through these. Give me a little bit more. And that's it, unfortunately. I'll run out of hot glue. But that's all right. It's really annoying because I know I've got a box of the stuff somewhere. Did I get my coffee? What's going on? One of those things, it might be working, it might not be working. I'll have a chat in a tick. It must be, it must be doing something. I don't know. Oh, right, where we go? Ah, what's happened? Oh, look, people have been chatting. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ty. I think I said that. Stout stick, stout stick, save and the beaut. Here you go, stout good day. Oh, stout, there's someone coming. I don't know, I'm behind the times. <clears throat> I, don't know. I see you were focused, Wes. You were focused. Finding a, a hard drive, Wes, and it had all this poetry I'd written years ago. I think that was before you came in. 
Yeah, I must have wanted to put a new hard drive in mine and in my main editing computer. And yeah, that was terrible. Uh, it just crashed. And it was going to cost me hundreds of dollars to get it back, so I thought, nah, she'd be right. Oh. I don't know if it's going to be on Max, the Brisbane show. I've got no idea. Um, oh, you idiot. Wait a minute. That's why it wasn't going, because I didn't put a coffee bubble in it. <laughs> Where's a coffee thing? Where is a coffee thing? I'll go and get one. Wait a minute. Oh. And the, tr the trouble is everything's getting too smart and I don't like things that are smarter than I am. There we go. I'll have one of those. I'll have, I think it's a Columbia. Columbia coffee. There we go. Now it should work. Happy. I'm happy now. Um, well, yeah, I don't know, Max. I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing shows or what's happening. I, I'm sort of pairing back on going away now. I, I just like staying here at home. Uh, so we'll see. We should get. We just should do a, a virtual one like uh, Theo's been doing. <laughs> Scared controls, good day, mate. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for dropping in. And the season's greeting back to you, middle from Trinidad, from Brisbane, Australia. Right, where you last had a coffee thing. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I, I did have... Oh, look, there it is. It's right over here. It's on, on the machine. It's on the new scroll saw. Twit. I don't know. I'm oh, lucky I've got spares. Yeah, no, that's modern tech. Give me a bar, give me, give me a pencil. I've got a sharpen max. I'm a happy man. What was it the other day? Um, oh, someone recognised a boy scout. Look, I don't smoke, right? But I've got a cigarette lighter in that pocket. I've got a pocket watch in that pocket. Because then I can tell the time, and it's always right. And in this pocket... I've got a torch, because you never know when you need a torch. In my back pocket, I've got a mask if anyone wants one. And in the other pocket, I've got some money in case I'm away from home and I get hungry. That, but you just carry these things with you. Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm on, the, on my belt. There you go. Got a pocket knife on my belt. Just you never know when you need things. So I might just slide a bit of milk into that. Oh dear. Oh. Every, everything falls down, she'd be right. There we go. Oh, and a pack of the bickies. I'll open them. I like them. These are my all time favourite biscuits. Cadbury breakaways. That that where are we? There you go. I don't know if you can get them anywhere else. Oh, they're nice. This one's most likely half melted, which it has. It doesn't matter. They're yummy. Wafer bickies. Ha! Ah, all right. And and pencils, they, they double good for coffee stirrers as well. And you know where they've been? So you can take the coffee off them. Mmm! I've got to tell you. That is a very nice, well-earned coffee. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's ridiculous, isn't it? 
In my truck, I've got a Leatherman. He's got a blade on, he's got a pair of pliers, he's got a screwdriver, he's got a pair of scissors. Maybe a toothpick. Oh, that's legal, I can carry that because it's a tool. Well, from my perspective, I'm a woodworker and if I don't use that knife six times a day pulling splinters out or cutting stuff up, it means I didn't get out of bed. But the other thing I found very, very interesting, hang on, I'll show you this one. Because, because I have it on a belt and you can see the um, knife poking through, they don't class that as a concealed weapon. There you go. They don't class it as a concealed weapon because you can see it. But if it was in my pocket, it would be concealed. I don't know. And yet you've got the coppers running around looking like they work at Bunnings with all this stuff hanging off them. Oh, we can tase you, we can shoot you, we can pepper spray you, we can hit you in there with a torch, but you can't have a pocket knife. Well, there you go. But my, my idea, be nice to police people because they're doing a good job. And most of them, most of them will actually give you a laugh. They'll laugh with you. I had one the other day, I got pulled over for a, a, a breathalyzer, you know, booze check. <laughs> He's a big fella too, Sergeant. And he stood there like that. And then when I pulled up, his hand went down like that, sort of going this way. <laughs> and I was in the MX-5 and I was eating a packet of potato chips. So I put the chips in his hand and he roared with laughter. He said, no, he said, I better not. I've had a few too many. So, <laughs> so there you go. Okay, well, that's ready to go, but we've got to glue that when I get some more hot glue. Oh, oh thank you, Sacred Controls. I appreciate that. Two thumbs up. No, two thumbs up. Heart energy out to you. I really appreciate that. You just bought me a cup of coffee and there's not a friendlier thing you can do to me in the world than buy me a cup of coffee, I tell you. It's made my day, that is. Okay, just got to nick that off a bit. Um, where are we going? Ah, do -do 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 -do. ah. Oh yeah, Max, I will add. Right. I carry a lighter, I carry a torch, I've got a pen, I've got all this stuff, but mate, I can never find my car keys or my sunglasses. So, <laughs> it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. <laughs> We've got three cars and if I can't find the keys to one, I'll take a different car. <laughs> and Susie, she's She's got a little Toyota Corolla, and on her key ring, she's got everything. You know, the remote controls and the house keys and all this other stuff. We do have a spare key. And whenever I take her car out, she gives me the spare key because she knows I'm going to lose all the other ones otherwise. <laughs> Wise lady, that one. Very smart. Okay. Oh, let's go. Which way we go? We might just. Oh. Bring this over. We'll do it this way. There we go. Oh, I'm, I'm going to cheat. Hang on, wait a minute. I'll get me sander out. Oh.
much as I like doing hand tool work, sometimes it's really nice to use the machine as well. I've gone blind. My um, my TV screen's just gone off. Where is it? There it is. Oh, you can see me. I just can't see you. Are you back? There's a pencil. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to cut that. And I've got three more to go. And then that'll just about pull me out. I think, I think we'll get them done in time. Gotta love Japanese saws. They just work so well. Oh, what have we on that one? Ah! I just just thumped into a piece one. I didn't want to. <laughs> What's going ding ding? Oh. My um, hold downs were colliding with each other. <sighs> I reckon one, two, and one off this end. That's good enough for me. Oh. I can't remember which ones I've done and which ones I haven't done. Oh, okay. That one needs some goings over. This one, we'll see how close we are. Oh. What? I'll show you what they're going to look like when they're finished, finished. Oh. So this has still got to have a, a surround like this around it, but that's how they're going to look when they're finished. That's where all the hearts were for. So that won't take long to finish that off. But I think once I've done these, I'll have to shoot off and go and get some uh, more glue sticks. I thought they were in Susie's sewing room, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, that fitted all right. Last one. A bit of pencil on that. Let me rub that off. Oh. Famous last words, these ones fit well. No, nope, still gonna do a little bit on that. And a little bit more. Oh, 
I'm hoping the local hardware shop has something I don't have to go for a big drive or else I'll have to go for a big drive. Mm. Okay. Done, done, done. What have I got here? I've got two. I might have to cut. That one's okay. That one's okay. All right. Where's, where's some length? I'll cut these two. Cut that one there. I'll be with you in a tick. <laughs> All right, let's have a chat. Ah. Oh. Do you know what you can taste that? Oh, it's nice. Nah, Bob dips out. Where? Hey, did I finish it? I can't remember if I finished it or not. No, I didn't. I, I would have left it there for the cockroaches tonight. Mmm. Go. The other thing is, BG, you got to have a good reason. And I don't know about other states, but in Queensland, if you have a look, it says if you can just, if you can satisfy the uh, person that's asking you why you carry a knife, they'll let you off. And they give you three or four legitimate reasons why you carry a knife. One, to, to peel fruit. Two, uh, to cut rope. Um, three, I don't know, clean out horses hooves. And then they go, as a self-defense weapon is not acceptable. So there you go. But I've got a fold-up chisel. I can carry that in my back pocket, no one cares. I'm not gonna rant, because I'm not gonna. <laughs> Uh, I am enjoying my coffee. Thank you, Sacred. And it's, it's free because you bought it for me. I'll shout you one if you were here, mate. Hey, Red Lotus. How are you? Thanks for dropping by. Hey, we're getting new people in. Louise, good afternoon. How are you? Did you get much of that storm the other day? Oh, and if you're new to that, yeah, there you go. I, I keep forgetting because I, I, I'm looking forward to hitting 100, but I, it's not sort of my goal in life. Um, but if you're new and you do like what you see, please smack that subscribe button and the bell and you get notifications when I'm on. And if you do get a notification when I'm on, could you ring me up and let me know so I'll get down to the shed. <sighs> G'day Trevor! The big fella has arrived. Trevor has entered the building. He's most, have you been busy with, <laughs> with scam callers? Now you got the power back on. <laughs> yeah, good. Trevor, she's fine but very demanding. Yeah, I can see what her demands are. Trevor, 
Stay in the room. Keep the door locked. Don't annoy me. Why do you think I'm down here, mate, not up in the house? <laughs> uh, could you use high glue for leather? Um, yeah, to stick down, I guess you could. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that, Brenda. I'm sure they've used it. I'm sure I've used it in the past for, for just sticking down. But it goes off pretty quick. But when you think about it, when you think about it, it comes off a cow, so it's got to... Excuse me, the leather comes off a cow and the glue comes from the leather off a cow, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. Fishing. Oh, good on you, Trev. Yeah, I haven't seen... Oh, I saw a couple of nights ago, Panda, she was on. That's a flock of seagulls. Oh, oh dear. Yes, yeah, some of that some of that hail they had up at Bribey Island. There was a, a video of a young girl, well, it sounded like a young girl or young lady, in a car, and the car was being trashed by the hailstones. And yes, yeah, you, you you could tell she wasn't happy. Okay, let's, let's do this lucky last one, eh? The temptation with this is to put a bit more blade out so it'll go quicker. But if you do that, you run the risk of tearing fibres. So just be patient. I'm saying that for my benefit, not yours. Be patient, Stephen. Woosa. I, lo I love those movies. Bad boys. Woosa. Now, don't try that with a Japanese saw in your hand. I nearly, I nearly did a Van Gogh on myself. Ah, uh. oh, dear. Middle Ken Pitchy. What's the name of the plane you are using? This up. Oh. This is a, a Veritas shooting plane. It's primarily designed for doing what I do, although you can use any plane to do what I do, it's just this is a specific one. This is a right-handed one. They do do a left-handed one, which I would prefer, but beggars can't be choosers. Mm. Um, I, can't, I can't use another plane in there or I will show you. Oh dear. See, you could use one like this. Exactly the same, only, oh, you could, because that's high enough. Because I've got a brass rail here that that plane runs on. But hang on, let me, let me go here. Oh, what have we got? Oh dear, let me get a number three out of here. Oop. Here you go. That's a number three. Will that fit? That'll fit. Look at that. We'll use that. So it does the same job. So you're not, you don't have to use a shooting plane, but I thought I haven't used it for a while, so I might as well. Or I could use one of um, Terry Gordon's, maybe. Let me see. Yep, but I'd have to, I'd have to knock this handle out, which I don't want to do. This one's uh, unique, or not unique, it's the, because I can use it as a shooting plane like that, but I can also use it as a finishing plane. The handle's got a grub screw this end, and it'll flip up so I can then plane tabletops or whatever, if I did so desire. Mm.
I reckon we'll go three. One, two, three. There you go. Dunsky. Oh. And this one. Put an edge on. Another six. Um, I look, I love using hand planes like this and hand tools because it just helps you so much with judgment. You know, you look at something, you go, oh, you, you possibly, well, you could measure it, but it's so small. But if you're using hand planes all the time, you, you get much more sensitive to smallness and minute eye, if you like. So instead of, where is a carpenter? Another one with carpenters. A lot of my friends are carpenters. They, they'll look at something and say, oh, it needs to have two inches off or 50 mil off. Whereas furniture making, you're looking and it's three passes or, you know, 64th of an inch. I remember when I, I was learning fine furniture making, my friend and, and mentor, and still is a mentor and still is a friend, Jeffrey Hanna, said to me once, I'd finished um, a table and I, I, it had drawers on it, it was an entrance table. And he came up and he goes like that to the drawer, he said, no, it's too tight. I said, no, it should be right. He said, no, he said, oh, what I want you to do, the drawer was about that long, right? And I had a, it was this plane, this, this, this actual number seven, which I've had for years. He said, I want you to plane 128th of an inch to nothing. Now, 128th of an inch isn't very much at all. And I'm thinking, no, I'll use sandpaper. He said, no, you won't use a plane. And <laughs> I'm thinking, who cares? But... You get that sensitivity to touch, and once you know what's right, it's very hard to live with it when you know it's not right. Don't get me wrong, and, and I've said it before, I'm not a Luddite by any means. Certain technologies I don't like, but there are things in the workshop that um, are advanced technology that I love. Love Dado blades. I haven't for years. I've, I've been frightened of them. And I bought one. Um, I don't know. Might have been about March this year, I think. And oh, look, I love it. I use the Dado blade. Here we go for those that can remember. I use the Dado blade more than the router now. I find it's cleaner, quicker, and less risky. Mind you, the first time you turn it on, you'd, you'd hate it, Max. You, it's just over three quarters of an inch wide saw blade. And when it takes off, you can hear it. And you just, you just think, you know, a three, a three mil saw blade can take my finger off. Imagine the damage that thing can do. I think that will do just fine there too. All right. Uh, now, there's one I've got to do completely, then I've got to do the tops. Might do those tomorrow. Um, do the beading on the top. But that's about all I can do today until I go and get some more glue sticks. I honestly did have a look around. I, I couldn't find the flipping things anyway. But anyway, anywho, let's have a chin wag. 
Ah. Ah, where are we? Bandy dum ba dum bum. <laughs> oh, good on you, Andy. anything, John, while you're away. I'm pleased you got home all right, though, Trev. Oh. Boom, ba dee dum boom, dum boom. <whistles> ba dee dum ba da ba dum <laughs> Second stream in a row. Good on ya. Uh, oh, I know, I know, well, Louise, I, I know. I, I don't know if I told you, but some of you missed it, but I was streaming yesterday, obviously, because I did two days in a row, John just told me. And I got a text, do you want a pool table? I thought, no, it wasn't on my list of things. But I thought, all right, and I'm going to rebuild it. I don't know. I'm, I'm tossing up whether to do Coachwood and Ebony, which is black and really nice cream, or New Guinea Rosewood. New Guinea Rosewood, I can get some 8x8 billets and turn the snooker table legs out of one piece, which I think will look awesome. And then I remember we had a little table years ago, but we still got the pool balls from it. And Susie said, I think we've still got the pool balls somewhere. I said, oh, have we? Yeah, she said, I know we've got them, but I don't know where they are, but I'll most likely find them when I'm looking for something else. <laughs> so that's quite likely going to happen. I'm just looking at my desk here. Now, I wonder I haven't been able to read the chat. It's all skew with it. Oh. oh, and the school next door, they've got these gongs now. What was wrong with the bell? You hear a school bell, but no, now they've got these gongs that go on and on and on. I'll wait until school goes back. I'll start doing my chainsaw and I'll fix them. Oh, dear. There's feistiness in the old fella yet. Um, yeah, that's pretty pretty close to central. Ah. Oh, well, that's all right. I'll provide you caught up, please. Uh, no, I haven't heard from Ren. Um, I should send her an email. Everyone's asking about you. Where are you, Marta, me dear? In the break, we had reorganised my workshop, so now I can get to my tools. Oh, yeah, you Skype. I wish I could. I've got, I've just got rubbish. I've got bee boxes over here. I've got bee boxes to put together over there. I've got a cabinet over there. That one, the coffee cabinet one with the leaves, I've got to finish that. We're going to put that on the wall. I've got more bee boxes there. I've got chopping boards there. I've got a stool there that's halfway through a video. And then I've got, I don't know what that was down there. But <laughs> I'll turn it into something. Anyway, that's it. I'd better go and get myself some glue sticks. As I said, and I genuinely mean it, uh, thank you so much for make, making it easier for me to come down here and work. It's lovely. And, and sacred controls. Thank you so much for my coffee. I really appreciate that. And for everyone that's dropped in and said good day, thank you so much. And it's great to see you all having a chat. I, I was looking on something the other day. Uh, Facebook, and there was a couple of you chatting on Facebook, nothing to do with woodwork in Masterclass, and it occurred to me, what a wonderful thing we, we have created. We've introduced people from all around the world to each other, and I noticed in the chat room today, you know, you're going, oh, you're on Facebook, can I friend you, can I show you pictures? And what a wonderful way to network, and if you bumped into each other in the street, you wouldn't know each other, but our souls are united. There you go. I'll go all spiritual on you again. Um, but that's it. I am going to see you, Steve. See you, Louise. See you, Jared. See you, Andy. See you, John. See you, Wes. Uh, see you, Max. See you, Trev. See you, everyone else. If I missed you, I wasn't on purpose. But this is Steve pulling the shed door down. Going to get some glue sticks and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. And do what you have to do to maintain your sanity and good health. That's what I wish each and every one of you. And I've got a sneaky suspicion 
I'll be streaming again tomorrow sometime so I can finish these boxes off. So till then, God bless. Be nice. Catch you later. Bye for now. Bye, Brenda. You just snuck in there.